Hey guys, today we're gonna go over the most alluring house in Westeros, Martell. We're gonna cover their early game strategy, we're gonna go over a path to victory for them, and then we're gonna cover really important areas for them to defend. If you wanna go ahead and skip ahead, there should be timestamps below, feel free to do so. So for the early game is House Martell, you're really going to focus on establishing that core parameter that you have surrounding the Sea of Dorne. I would personally place a lot of value on establishing good relations with Tyrell, assuming they'll let you take Starfall. It gets a lot dicier if they don't. But otherwise, that will allow you to consolidate power in the Boneway and Prince's Pass without being raided by Tyrell, and you really don't have many other options to consolidate power other than Sunspear, and ideally you'll be mustering there. So I really think the house cards are worthy of another video, but use the fact that all of house cards for Martell are oriented against don't attack you, you're going to regret it to your advantage early game to secure good relations with Tyrell and Baratheon. To further solidify that alliance with Tyrell, we're going to go ahead and muster on turn one, and they can't do this. So this means you're going to get a troop number advantage. I'm going to place a March order on the Sea of Dorne in order to move out to the East Summer Sea before Baratheon has a chance to. If you think they might try to do that, you might want to play a plus one. In this case, I'm going to take that plus one token and put it on Salt Shore to move that into Starfall. So you want to make sure you march with the plus zero token first, whether you put that in Sea of Dorne or Salt Shore, just so you don't waste that plus one. So I'm going to go ahead and move this ship out into the East Summer Sea, and it's especially important because once Baratheon gets a foothold, it's hard to get rid of him, and he has a March Order on him right now. So I can't cover all scenarios, but if for some reason Baratheon beats you here, and you have a plus one order, even if he moves two ships in there, you just Red Viper him and he really regrets it. If Tyrell beats you Starfall... The backup plan there for me would be to just take one of the other castles and next round when I have that number advantage, circle back and kick them right out of Starfall. All right, let's go ahead and muster. So we're for sure going to want to take one of our ships and put that in Sea of Dorne. That's going to get us a land bridge and the ability to support most of our core areas. If Tyrell ends up taking Starfall, I might consider getting more land based units just to go help kick him off of there. But in this case, we have Starfall all as well. We're going to get footmen. They're cheap, and they're the easiest way to expand out into your core area. So I end up getting lucky here with a mustering during the Westerosi phase. I'm going to take a ship in Sunspear and take that into Sea of Dorne. That's going to provide support to the surrounding core. I'm going to put another ship out into East Summer Sea. That will help defend against Baratheon trying to come in. You could also put it into the port if you wanted a more of an earlier consolidate power area. Over here in Starfall, it gets a little more tricky. I would really like to put another footman down so I can spread out, but I'm going to end up going with a knight. That will hopefully continue to discourage any aggressive moves from Tyrell. So going into round two's planning phase, if you didn't luck out and get mustering during the Westerosi phase, you may just want to muster within Sunspear and hold off on this strategy for another turn. But with that said, we're going to go into Sunspear and we're going to do a plus one march order. And really our goal here is to just spread out. In the Sea of Dorne, we're going to play a plus one support. That's going to help us take back the Boneway in this case. More normally, it's kind of like Storm's End that you lose. This is really only a move that I see the AI make. They ended up marching into the Reach, and then they got routed into the Boneway. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. It really encourages me to create more content like this. With that said, I'm going to do a plus one defense order here. This is really just to discourage Baratheon from trying to take this East Summer Sea from me. It's really important so he can't raid the inner sea support. I'm also going to do a plus one defense here. Same deal, just trying to keep Tyrell out of the place. Ah, perfect. So this is something I see occur in a lot of games. The Baratheon player seems to be under some sort of false impression that Storm's End is theirs. It is in fact not. So we're going to use this plus one march order that we have here in order to send one footman over to take Yornwood. I would normally take this footman to take the Boneway. It's typically unoccupied at this point. But you can initiate two battles. Again, normally in multiplayer, it's unoccupied. I'm going to leave it behind here to muster. And I'm going to send my knight over to Storm's End. 
And along with support from Sea of Dorne, this should be an easy win. So the Martell player really has an advantage here because they start with the most castles. Starfall, Yornwood, Sunspear, and Storm's Inn puts them at four right off the bat. However, getting the seven castles with Martell, in my opinion, is probably the hardest house to do it with. So as mentioned earlier, I really want to get a good alliance with Tyrell going because our key areas to consolidate power are going to be the Boneway and Prince's Pass. Assuming we can get Starfall without too much of a fuss. So the other thing with going into West Summer Sea is you follow this on up and it really only takes you to High Garden, which it's not impossible to take someone's home area, but it's quite difficult. And I'm not really sure moving into the West Summer Sea and trying to go after someone's home territory is really worth it just for one more castle. So with the exception of that weird footman there, this is pretty indicative of what I see a lot in multiplayer matches. Tyrell takes the reach, so that kind of limits your options into going into Shipbreaker's Bay. And this is going to be a little funny, and leave some comments below if you, if you think I'm crazy here, but taking Dragonstone may actually be your best bet here, because taking that will also allow you to go into Crackclaw Point from Shipbreaker's Bay. Do be gentle on me in the comments. Typically, Tyrell wants to push right into King's Landing here, so going after Baratheon reinforces that strong alliance you two have so you can keep consolidating that power. And if you play your cards right, you may be able to convince Stark to come down from the north and help you out with support to get into Shipbreaker's Bay and take Dragonstone, assuming they're not busy with Greyjoy. So that would leave you with a total of six castles, and at this point, we're going to have to get a little tricksy. I find that trying to borrow the reach from your ever-loving ally for the win is probably your best bet, but keep in mind, due to the initial four castles you start with, combined with your house cards being very defensive, in my mind, Martell set up to be the most wait and see player that exists in the game, which is really thematic to the books and less of the show, but whatever. So moving on to some key areas for defense, the Sea of Dorne is amazing. That area will cover Storm's End, the Boneway, Yornwood, and Sunspear. So it's really important to keep the East Summer Sea on lockdown. You do not want another player moving into that region to potentially raid the Sea of Dorne, which then opens up your entire core area. I find Yornwood to be a great area of support for the surrounding areas. That'll help the Boneway, Princess Pass, Starfall, and Sunspear, all of which would typically be preoccupied consolidating power or playing defense orders. So due to Baratheon's house cards, I find Shipbreaker's Bay incredibly difficult to take. However, once you do, that provides you a land bridge into Dragonstone, which ideally you take in one fell swoop, Shipbreaker's Bay followed immediately by Dragonstone. Shipbreaker's Bay will also provide you a fantastic land bridge and a crack claw point. Assuming you're allied up with Stark, they might actually let you support there. So personally, I think Bowway and Princess Pass are incredibly important places because that's where you can consolidate power with the exception of Sunspear. Leave a comment below if you guys are seeing something I'm not here, because if you don't keep these, you aren't able to keep up on those influence tracks. And if Tyrell pushes into you, that leaves you with the Arbor, the Dornish Marshes, and the Three Towers, which you really need to push hard into to maintain your position on those tracks. However, I want to reemphasize, I would strongly suggest not going to war with Tyrell. It's just not the easiest path to victory. Stay away from them. Leverage that defense you have in the early game. Leverage the fact that they start off pretty weak and get a strong bond there. Don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. That really motivates me to push out more content like this and kind of guide where I want to go with the channel. I really appreciate you watching either way. And probably more importantly, leave some comments down below. I'm looking to maybe make a second edition of this with incorporating your feedback. So thanks. Bye.